Welcome back to Hudson Vintage. Today we are starting with the absolute basics. We're starting at the beginning. We are breaking down the secrets that you should know if you want to find vintage and antique jewelry worth money. Do you want to find out what the secrets are? Get your pencil and paper ready and keep watching because we are breaking it down. Today we're looking at some of my secrets. We're starting with the very basics and if you are more advanced and you want to go more in depth and take deeper dives into specific topics, I have a vast library of videos that I've already done and I will post the link to that playlist at the end of this video. So my first secret, the first thing that I do is I pick it up and I turn it over and I look at the reverse or what some people call the back of it. Is there any kind of marking at all? If you are looking at a piece of old vintage jewelry and it has a date and a signature, there's a very good chance that it's valuable because that means that it was made by someone who took the trouble to not only sign it, but date it. So that means that they made each piece one at a time. It was made by someone with their hands one at a time and dated by them like a piece of art would be in a gallery or in a museum. And it came from an artist studio or a designer studio or workshop. This is an example right here of one of my favorites. This is a Robert Lee Morris. This is absolutely beautiful. This is signed and dated. This is costume jewelry, but it's clad in a heavy, I think it's 18 or 24 karat gold. Robert Lee Morris was very prolific in the 1980s and his jewelry that is hand signed by him and dated by him is the most valuable jewelry that you can find with his name on it. Next up on the list is signed vintage jewelry. What if you turn over a piece of jewelry and you just see a signature or a hallmark, but you don't see a date? Well, there's an entire spectrum of signed costume jewelry to learn about. This is a signed Haskell from the 1960s. And this is very special. This is highly valuable because because it was handmade. Haskell jewelry was all made by hand and you can find out a lot more about Haskell jewelry if you want to watch my video. I'll put the card to that right here. Other marks to look for are obviously Chanel. There's also YSL or Yves Saint Laurent. There's some beautiful examples of that here. I love this Chanel. Isn't this beautiful? It's one of my favorites. Oscar de la Renta is another good one. Oh, Cadoro. I love Cadoro. Regency, oh Regency, I have, I was very fortunate and I've been exposed to a lot of Regency and I'm a Regency expert and this example here, I love the pink rhinestones in Regency especially, it's just a personal favorite. Also there's Vogue, there's Trafari, there's Boucher, there's Monet and Coro and Vendôme. In Canada there was Sherman and here's a great example of one of my all-time best finds. This is a David Mandel and he's out of Manhattan and this is extraordinary. This is from David Mandel. The show must go on. So beautiful. And honorable mention goes to Swarovski. I can't tell you the secrets without mentioning Swarovski. Swarovski is an extremely high-end jewelry company that is still making jewelry today but it's probably 75 years old if not more. You can find vintage jewelry with the old hallmarks and also so they supplied crystals to all the high-end designers and manufacturers and uh, couture houses even. You can be looking at something with Swarovski crystals and it's a good indicator that it's valuable. They supplied crystals to most of those companies for most of their existence and they still do today. The final category we are covering is what is commonly known as unsigned beauties. These are pieces that have incredible style or they're of a specific era or time period or design movement. 
So you may be looking at a piece that is Art Deco like this, or Art Nouveau, or Postmodern, and even though these pieces aren't signed, they are the epitome, really, of what this video is about. These pieces can be attributed by collectors or by experts, and this is really where the collector gets hooked. I know that's how I got hooked, because I found an early Haskell that was really a museum piece when I was 16 and it wasn't signed. And um, early Haskell, a lot of early Haskell isn't signed, so it's worth studying. And I took it apart and I used it to make other jewelry. And then years later, I realized what I did and I started studying it and learning about it. And now I'm not only what I consider a Haskell expert, but I'm also a custodian. And I do make sure that it goes to the right homes that will appreciate it and take proper care of it. This is where the collector gets hooked because it's possible to find something like an early unsigned Haskell and then you realize what you have and you want to find more. And that's where the addiction starts because the more you study, the more you find out about other things, the more you learn, the better you get at it. And then before you know it, you're a collector and then you're a custodian and you realize that it's important to take care of this jewelry and make sure that it survives. It is possible to attribute old vintage jewelry by its construction and by its materials and experts and collectors really can tell you where a piece was made or who made it just by looking at those details. So to recap, what are the secrets? Well, turn it over. Does it have a signature or a hallmark? Is it dated? Does it look like it came from a specific time period like mid-century modern or Art Deco or Art Nouveau? What are the materials? Does it look handmade? Does it look like it came from a specific part of the world like the Scandinavian school or the Belle Epoque? All of this is what you should be considering when you pick up a piece of old jewelry and you want to know if it's valuable or collectible. If you want to see more on vintage jewelry where I go in depth on all of these topics, then click this right here. This is the playlist on all those videos. Thank you so much for watching. Click like if you enjoyed this video and I will see you next time.